Hey everybody, how are you doing today? I hope that you are in a fantastic mood. And if you aren't already in a fantastic mood, I wholeheartedly believe that learning about transition sentences is going to put you into a fantastic mood, right? That's right, yeah, just positive self-affirmation. It will help you get through this video a little bit better. All right, are you with me? Good. Okay, so why are transitions so important? Well, there's a lot of reasons why transitions are important. So let's just talk about what transitions are. First of all, a transition is something where you go from one place to another. So if you're transitioning between trains when you're riding the subway, you're going from one train to another train, right? You are making a transition. So, but when you're communicating, a transition can be a word, it can be a phrase, it can be a whole sentence. And basically it's taking you from one thing to another. And the reason why we do this is because as communicators um, and as listeners, we are programmed to listen for clues about where the conversation is going. That helps us fully understand and comprehend what's going on. So we don't want to be lost all the time. So when you think about transitions and how important they are, I want to give you a little bit of an example. Let's pretend your friend tells you this story. Yeah, so there's this like guy with green hair and he wears all black all the time. And I totally had $25 in my pocket. And I took that $25 and I donated it to this charity. And you know, the next thing I know, I'm having coffee with this guy. All right, don't you have so many questions for your friend? You're like, oh, why do you always tell stories this way? I'm so lost, okay? Well, let's add a little bit more detail and some transitions to show you how important it is because we had three topics there, right? We had green hair guy, we had charity, and we had coffee. How are these things all related? Those are probably questions that you would be asking your friend because she didn't help you when she was communicating. What if she said, hey, there's this guy I really like. He has green hair and he wears all black all the time and he's really heavily involved in this one charity. Well, I really like donating to charity and I had an extra $25 in my pocket. I decided that since I like this guy so much, I would go ahead and donate the $25 to the charity that he's really involved in. And while I was doing that, wouldn't you believe it, I bumped into him and we kind of hit it off. And the next thing I knew, we went and we had coffee. Do you see how by adding more details and some transitions in between those three topics, we were able to get more of a complete story? And that's what your teacher's trying to get you to do when your teacher says, hey, you need to really work on your transitions. This paper would be so much better if you, if you only had more transitions. Because when you're writing, guess what? You know where you're going. You know why you chose to write about those things. You have to remember the person reading your paper, the person that you are communicating with, they don't know why you're talking about those things. It's your job to tell them and it's your job to lead them through the path of your paper and transitions are the signposts. They are telling your reader, this is what direction we're going in next. Does that make sense? I really hope so. So today we're really gonna focus on transition sentences and I'm going to kind of focus on where they belong in my favorite type of essay, which is a five paragraph essay. Now, even if you're not writing a five paragraph essay, you can take the information that I'm giving you here today and you can apply it, not just to how you speak with people, but you can apply it to whatever type of writing that you're doing because they're very simple approaches, they're simple concepts, and they can be used universally for transition sentences, okay? So let's talk about some things that you might be asking yourself right now. Like for example, where do I put these mystery transition sentences in my paper? Well. Most typically, they occur at the end of a paragraph, okay? And sometimes they occur at the beginning of a paragraph. Every once in a while, you'll see a transition sentence that starts at the end of one paragraph, the idea, a whole sentence there, and then another whole sentence at the beginning of the next paragraph to sort of finish that thought, where both of those sentences that I just mentioned have a little bit of everything in them to kind of lead the reader through. We're not gonna be doing this today. We're gonna to be focusing on those sentences that have everything that we need just contained in one sentence. So we're typically going to see them in my examples. Um, they're mostly going to be at the end of a paragraph and I'll indicate where they might be at the beginning of a paragraph, okay? So 
What's this mystery? How do you write it? What's this formula I'm talking about? It's very simple. You're going to put information in the beginning of your sentence that deals with the paragraph that you're in, where you are coming from. And the second part of the sentence is going to let the reader know, well, here's where I'm going. And within that sentence, you're going to remind the reader how those things are connected, what the relationship is between those things. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I also recommend, here's a tip, don't write these transition sentences until you've completed the first draft of your paper. Once you've completed the first draft of your paper, you will be in a better position to understand what each paragraph is about and how to smoothly transition from one to the next. If you try to write your transition sentences too early, I guarantee you you're gonna go back and you're gonna to have to rewrite them. Okay, so how am I choosing to illustrate this to you? Well, you can see I have a graphical representation of an outline of a five paragraph essay. For those of you that are familiar with this, you recognize those Roman numerals one through five, okay? If you're not familiar with a five paragraph essay, I recommend checking out my video. I have one and I'll put a, a link to it here in this video so that you can check it out. However, what I have here is I have in the very first paragraph, you can see it's an introductory paragraph. It's followed by three main point paragraphs. And then the very last paragraph is a conclusion paragraph. Now I said that I graphically represented this. Well, obviously I'm not gonna put an entire five paragraph essay on this slide. So what I've chosen to do is just use symbols to indicate what are the main things that are gonna be in that paragraph. So we can go from one paragraph to the next. I wanna know where I am and where I'm going. So you can see in the first paragraph, which is the introductory paragraph, I have a little picture of my chihuahua, and yes, that is my actual chihuahua, okay? And then a little heart representing how I feel about him. That's gonna be the general direction of that paragraph. It's gonna be a, the topic is going to be about my chihuahua, and the general direction is going to be I really care about him. And the reasons why I care about him are the next three symbols, the triangle, the star, and the circle, okay? So all of those things are going to be mentioned in the introductory paragraph, because you're gonna to wanna to tell, in, in a typical five paragraph essay, you're telling the reader where you're going. That's your thesis, okay? Now you can see in each of the main point, the body paragraphs, I zero in on one of those symbols, but I also in every single paragraph have my chihuahua and the little heart symbol. That's because the whole theme of the essay that I'm talking about here, the main topic is my chihuahua. I should be talking about him in every single paragraph and also the general direction that I care about him, that I love him, that is also going to be represented in every paragraph. The difference in those paragraphs is going to be what I'm focused on. And then you can see in the conclusion paragraph, I'm talking about everything again, all of that stuff, because in the conclusion, you sum up what you were talking about. Okay, so I just kind of went into a bunch of detail here. I'm gonna show you in the next slide where those transition sentences are going to slide in. And I've represented that with a red T. You can see in a five paragraph essay, I'm gonna have four transitions. One between the introductory paragraph and the first main point. And then there's gonna be transition sentences in between each main point. And then the third main point is gonna transition from the third main point to the conclusion paragraph, okay? Now I'm gonna break this down and we're gonna look at each one of those four transition sentences and how we should be tackling those. All right, so let's talk about the first one. All right, so in our introductory paragraph, we talk about all of those things. I love my chihuahua because triangle star circle, okay? Now, in your first um, main point paragraph, in the body, the first paragraph is gonna zero in, it's gonna be narrow, and it's only gonna be talking about triangle. So I love my chihuahua because triangle. So how do we transition from our introductory paragraph to our first main point? Well, our introductory paragraph was broad. It talked about all of those things. Our main first main point paragraph is narrow. It only talks about one of those things. So in the first part of our sentence, we have to let the reader know that we are leaving this broad discussion and we're gonna talk about one specific thing, okay? so. Now, these triangle and the star and the circle, they're symbolic, so I'll just 
make up some stuff whenever I read these examples. But here's an example of the sentence you can see that down at the bottom. It says, of all the things that I love about my chihuahua, that's the first part of the sentence. And you see, I use the word all. That indicates that I understand that I'm coming from somewhere where there's a broad range of ideas, right? And now I'm gonna narrow it down for the second part of the sentence. I think I love his pyramid schemes the most. That's what that green triangle will stand for, okay? So of all the things I love about my chihuahua, I think I love his pyramid schemes the most. Yeah, he's sneaky, that guy, that, par that, <laughs> that little chihuahua. Okay, so do you see how I went from broad, and I even used the word all, and I mentioned the relationship is that th I have good feelings about my chihuahua because of these things, and specifically about his pyramid schemes which is the topic of that main point paragraph number one. Now, I would put this particular sentence in the first part, it would be the first sentence of my main point number one paragraph. Um, you can also put that at the end of your introductory paragraph. It's entirely up to you. It would fit either place. It just depends on what the rest of your paper sounds like and how it fits in stylistically. Okay, I hope this is making sense because now we're moving on to the next transition sentence, which is between main point number one and main point number two. Now we're gonna go from that paragraph about pyramid schemes. I love my chihuahua because of his pyramid schemes. And now we're gonna be moving into this blue star area. Okay, so we want to transition. We want the first part of our sentence to be about where we are now, which is the pyramid schemes paragraph. And we want to take the reader, we wanna to move to the next paragraph, which is about this blue star. We'll call it his throwing star of death, okay? All right, so we're moving from pyramid schemes to throwing star of death. Hmm, how do we get there? Well, we remind the reader that there's a relationship between those two things. So look at my example. Each time my heart fills with joy upon seeing my Chihuahua's pyramid schemes, I am reminded that he also has an amazing throwing star of death. Do you see how suddenly those two very different things, pyramid schemes and throwing star of death, they're two seemingly unrelated, but we made them be relatable, related together, because we reminded the reader we're talking about the Chihuahua and why we love him. And that is why these two things belong together. So the reader's not shocked that we just started talking about blue throwing stars of death, okay? So is this making sense? I really hope so. And you can apply this formula across the board to all different types of writing. All right, so now next two paragraphs. We're now in the throwing star of death paragraph. And we wanna move into the yellow circle paragraph, which is the next main point. Again, we're going from narrow to narrow. So this is just like the last one. The first part of our sentence needs to remind the reader that we're leaving throwing star of death and that we're moving on to yellow circle, which we'll call my chihuahua's ability to harness the power of the sun, <laughs> okay? Um, so we're gonna go from throwing star of death to my chihuahua's ability to harness the power of the sun because he is super powerful and sometimes he scares me. If you've seen my other videos, you know, he frightens me, okay? But um, how do we get there? Just like we did last time. So here's my example, all right? I love my chihuahua's amazing blue throwing star of death. And I know that his blue starring death of, is made even more incredible because of his ability to harness the power of the sun. Do you see how I have linked together these two seemingly unrelated things? Because I reminded the reader that the whole topic of this paper is reasons why I care and love about my chihuahua. Does that make sense? Gosh, I hope so. All right, so now we're moving on to the last transition sentence. And this one is between the harnessing the power of the sun paragraph and the conclusion paragraph. Well, the conclusion paragraph is just like the introductory paragraph because it mentions all of the things, because it's summing up everything that you talked about in your paper. That's why it's called a conclusion. It's wrapping everything up, okay? So we wanna take the reader in an opposite direction that we took them from the first transition sentence I talked to. The first transition I talked about, remember, we went from broad to narrow. This time we're going from narrow to broad. 
Okay, so we want to make sure that in the first part of our sentence, we're referring to his ability to harness the power of the sun. And then we're going to let the reader know, hey, we're about to leave narrow topics and we're about to go back out and we're going to broad and we're going to broadly talk about everything. So here's my example. My chihuahua's ability to harness the power of the sun is heartwarming, but it is just one of the many wonderful things I love about him. Wow. Do you see how I even use the word many <laughs> um, to indicate we're going to be talking about more things than just one? Okay, that's my simple, easy formula for writing transition sentences, specifically in this case in a five paragraph essay. But you can take this formula and you can take it with you everywhere. Just remember, you really need to understand the paragraph that you're coming from and the paragraph that you're going into. And you just have to make sure that you let the reader know in the transition sentence how those two things are related. Okay, well, I really hope that you enjoyed this lesson. If you did, as always, I really um, am happy when you like and subscribe. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. I hope it makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside when you do so. Um, and if you want to, please check out my other videos. And thank you so much, and I hope you have a great day.